online, Calgary's Real Estate Hotline. I'm Robin and this is Sherry Bruno. Hello. With Get It Together, my <laughs> guest today. Welcome, Sherry. Thank you. And we want to hear all your questions about real estate and uh, interior design. So since I get to interview Sherry, I get to ask the first question. Uh, I'm just <laughs> taking that, that right. Um, so one question I've always had, Sherry, is what is the difference between a general contractor and what you do? So a lot of clients ask a question, so it's a great question. So I look at my role as more of a project manager role. So I, first of all, look after the design, the choosing of the things that are going into the home or the renovation space. But then I also, with the trades, create the renovation calendar. So ensuring that the renovation starts here and ends here. And then I also manage the budget. So if something uh, comes up in a renovation, we have to discuss it with the homeowner. Um, you see it on TV all the time, right? The, the, you, they break to a commercial and it's like, oh, there's mold. That normally doesn't happen. Usually when a renovation budget is created, you stick to it. Okay. So my role is managing every moving piece of the renovation to ensure it goes from point A, so paper, to the reality. Right, okay. Uh, so definitely more like a project manager than a... For sure. General, general contractors are... Uh, I look at them as the construction part. Like they manage all the construction questions. They look after um, anything regarding construction that I wouldn't know. So sometimes on my renovation projects, I have a site supervisor instead of a contractor. So they're the ones that are going to the site, making sure all the construction questions, if there are any, are answered. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I always wondered that. And hopefully... Anybody has questions out there that answers your questions as well. So I've got one um, stat that I actually want to share with people and I think it's relevant for today, uh, today's interview with Sherry because um, I came across a very interesting stat. It was uh, the majority of Canadians have almost 70% of their wealth in their principal residence. Mm -hmm. So now it's about 30% of Canadians that uh, have less than that but that's a huge percentage the vast majority of Canadians 70% of their wealth their net worth is tied up in their principal residence so very very important to make sure that you're utilizing getting good advice and doing all the right things to do with your mm -hmm. home because that's where majority of your yeah, wealth is right I agree I always say a home is probably the most expensive thing you'll ever buy in your lifetime yeah so hopefully you love coming home to it yeah so um, before we get to the questions, uh, just wanted to remind you, as always, that uh, we can uh, put your leave your questions in our comment section, uh, and we'll answer them as we uh, go along here. Uh, also, if you have anybody that um, uh, you feel like they this would be a good opportunity for them to get their real estate questions or interior design questions today answered, go ahead and tag them in the post below, and uh, maybe they'll tune in and uh, shoot us some questions. So. Anyway, um, why don't we uh, get to the, the first question that was sent in and I'll let Sherry take it away. Sure. Do you want to read the question yeah, and sure. give the answer? So Brooke sent in this question, is there a degree or some sort of certification to become an interior designer and do you have it? So that's a really good question because there's lots of avenues you can take for interior design. So I actually have a degree in education. So I was a teacher for 17 years before I decided to change things in my life. Um, Mount Royal here at Calgary, Mount Royal University in Calgary, they have a degrees uh, program. I have not taken a degree because, I'll be honest, I've already been to university for four years and I want to go to university again for four years. So there are other certifications that you can certainly get certified in and my certification is through the New York Institute of uh, Design. It's an online program, however, um, it's quite in intensive. You have to do your projects, you create your interior design projects, and then you mail them to New York. You have a designer who is attached to you and your projects, and um, it's a back and forth, back and forth. We do it online. I mail in my interior design projects, and they get sent back, and then you're graded. There are some other interior design certifications online that you can take. There's also home staging certifications. There's also interior decorating. So there's interior design and there's interior decorating. Okay. So I call the decorating, and honestly, this is, it's just me that calls it this, nobody else does, but I look at the decorating as more the fluff and stuff. The furniture, the drapery, the accessories, the decor, 
Whereas the anterior design is more the, the structure, the function, creating those functional places like a kitchen design or a bath design. So I tend to look at those as quite different um, things. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, ah, this is actually another good question. This is from Andy. And they asked, do you have access to a variety of materials and how do you source that? So over the eight years that I've been in business, I've taken a lot of time to create relationships with stores, people, and trades. So the answer, do you have access to a variety of materials? Absolutely. And when you create those relationships, I think a perk of working with the designer is for me at least, I can only speak for my business, is that I share my designer discount with my clients. So while anyone can go to a Lowe's, a Home Depot, any of those big box stores and get what you see on the shelf, designers actually have access to designer type products at the not designer price. Nice. So it's kind of nice. How do I source that? The, um, that's also a good question. So I treat uh, my business kind of in two facets. The first part is a design and that's all based on function. So I always look at function first and then how do you turn that function into pretty? So once the design is solidified, then we look at what are we gonna choose if we're talking to kitchen, cabinet counter, the flooring, uh, the counter, the backsplash, and how does that all come together big picture? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will pick things and they'll, I like that, and I like that, and I like that, and then you put it together and you're like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> something happened along the way that doesn't quite look nice. <laughs> but designers, we keep that big picture in mind all the time. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, this is another good one. These are good questions. You got good, you got good followers. <laughs> this is from Isabel. Why do renovations always seem to take longer than promised? So I have to say on, on my renovation projects, um, we might have a delay. There's one I'm working on right now that the cabinets were delayed. So that delays everything and, and we're lucky, fingers crossed it's only a week. But I would say the biggest thing that I've heard from clients who have done renovations previously that have had bad experiences is that they don't have a renovation calendar. They don't have a construction calendar or they didn't get one. So I, it's really important that when you are looking at hiring a contractor or project manager or designer, whoever ends up looking after your project, you need to insist on a calendar. So when is the start date? When is the end date? Because everything should be booked. The contractor shouldn't be phoning a painter at last minute trying to get someone in to do your house. Those people should be booked. And, and I know my trades, they actually love how anally organized I am because they know at least a month in advance when they're starting. And um, it and it all stems from communication, I think. The more communication, in my opinion, the better. Yeah. So when, when my projects start and I'm managing them, my clients get a calendar and I'm visual, so it's a, it's a month at a glance. Oh, cool. So it's here's when they start, here's when the bin's delivered, here's when trades are accessing your home, here's when, um, uh, a payment is due or a progress payment is due and here's when we're expected to get done. Now, if a curveball is thrown our way, that might get jigged around a little bit, but for the most part, we stick to a calendar. So that's what I would recommend to people. If they're, whoever they're looking at hiring, ask them, do you create some kind of calendar or some kind of um, structure for our renovation? Yeah. And they should be able to give you that. Excellent. Notice there's a question that's come in um, from uh, Parvane. Uh, is it better, better to buy a newer house or an older house with renovations done to it? Oh. So brand new home versus, uh, uh, I guess, an older home that's had renos. Uh, do you want to... Uh, do you, do you want me to go first? Yeah, sure. You can go next. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Ladies first. How's that? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I would say with a new house, if you're involved in the building process, you get to pick out whatever you want. So some people love that and that for some people it scares them because they don't know what to pick. There's no help with them to pick. They have a picture in their head but they can't get that picture in their head to reality. If you buy a house that's already renovated, you are stuck with whoever chose all that stuff for you. and. Sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's not a good thing. You know, sometimes I, and you, you might know this, 
you know, one thing people like to do before they sell their house is to put a new counter on, right? Let's get granite or quartz. But if you're putting granite on quartz on 30 year old cabinets, you're ending up with 30 year old cabinets with new quartz. You, you can't, you can, you never change that fact. Right. So I think if you're looking at an older house with a renovation that's already done to it, you should love what they've done to it. Like there might be one or two things. Paint's easy to change, but all those fixed elements, the cabinets, the flooring, the counters, any tile work, those are big ticket items. So if you don't like what was chosen, then you either live with it yeah. or you have to set aside X amount of money to change it to make it your own. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I'm going to approach it from the investments standpoint. Yes. And, and, um, <laughs> Uh, not from the heart, <laughs> but um, obviously if you buy a, a house that's an older home that's had renovations done to it, you, like you say, you're stuck with those renos, but you wouldn't buy it unless you liked it. So um, depending on the location, I mean, obviously a newer home in Calgary, it means you're on one of the fringes of the, 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 the city here. Because uh, if you want a brand new home, unless you're going to hire a custom builder, you're looking at one of the outer lying communities, which means you're farther away from downtown. So location may not be as good to the downtown core, but your dollar goes a lot further in the outer reaches of the of the city. So it really, I think it depends on your budget, depends on... One thing I've actually heard a lot of people say after building, and this isn't necessarily anything against builders because it's the nature of the beast, it's just part of the process. You know, you're usually in a new neighborhood, so there's lots of dust and dirt and lots of yeah. trucks, big trucks going in and out all the time because there's construction going on. So unless you're one of the last homes to be built, you're probably going to be dealing with a lot of dust, more yeah. dust than normal, and a lot of construction and whatnot. And a lot of people that have built with a builder, and again, this isn't slagging any builders because I think it's just the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. They say, glad I did it, but you know what? The next time around, I'm going to buy something mm -hmm. turnkey. Mm -hmm. So it, it I think it really depends on the individual. Uh, yeah. what their level of toleration for the pros and cons uh, on both scenarios. But uh, yeah, my big, an the answer would be depends. It really depends on yeah. the individual. And I know too, in, in the, it's, uh, I'll call it inner city. We're kind of on the burb. I, we're in Lake Chaparral, right? So we're kind of, I still consider ourselves in the burbs, even though there's communities now south of us. Yeah. Um, our homes are all roughly the same. They're, I wouldn't say they're cookie cutter, but they're really close. Like they're all two story. They all have similar floor plans. Whereas in older communities, you get that character. You don't get yeah. that in these in these new communities. There's not that character that you would get in a place like Lakeview or Acadia or wherever. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. You get the, I mean, I personally chose a more inner, well, I mean, growing up in Calgary where I live in Woodbine is uh, uh, definitely not the burbs yeah. um, anymore. It's almost inner city. <laughs> but when I was growing up, uh, uh, Southland Drive seemed like the edge of the mm. earth to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So um, dating myself a little bit there. but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you about where I grew up because Minipur was, was a town. Oh, a separate municipality back when I was, yeah, that's right. So anyway, well, great question there, Pravane. Thanks for mm -hmm. uh, submitting that and hope you're doing well today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess oh, you the got next one more. question for Monica. Can you help with the garden design as well as, as well as our home? So I like to, I'd like to. Well, I'm just gonna say no. Garden design is a totally different animal than interior design. I think there are landscape architects that are trained, and I would never. I ne I would do my own yard maybe but I wouldn't do somebody else's yard. That's To me, that's a whole different animal. Seek a different professional for that one. Seek, seek a professional to help you because they, they know. They know what they're doing. Uh, this might be off the wall, but is there any um, um, uh, advantage to um, your interior designer working with an exterior landscaping pro mm -hmm. professional to coordinate? Because maybe sometimes there might be a, uh, a theme both inside mm -hmm. and out. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, would it be for worthwhile sure. for them to work together? Yeah, so I help clients with exterior choices, mm -hmm. uh, deck, decking, siding, painting, all that kind of stuff. So when it comes time to choosing those type of things, I would definitely would love to be involved. In fact, I'm involved in, in a house right now in discussing, even though a landscape architect is going to look after the outside, I don't want them to pick an ugly stone. It has to, it has to, it has to go with everything that we're choosing as well. Mm, cool. Yeah. And I, I should actually mention that um, 
we chose this location because this is an example of some of <laughs> Sherry's handiwork. Uh, you might be able to see it in the background. Um, I made the flowers from scratch, in case you were wondering. <laughs> For those who know me, you know that's absolutely not true. Um, oh, it looks like we've got another question from Parvane. Uh, do you design commercial spaces too? I'm actually working in a commercial space mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. yeah, I don't do a lot of commercial work because again, interior designers, they tend to be residential or commercial, but this commercial client is actually a residential client of mine as well. Oh, okay. So yeah, helping her with flooring choicing and painting, and then I'm going to help them with their office layout. So do a space plan for them so that they're not purchasing too big of a desk, too small of a desk, just, just finding okay. the right size furniture for them. Do you find, like I know in, in residential, in, as a realtor, there's residential realtors and there's commercial realtors. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, um, you tend to see uh, realtors either focus on just commercial or just residential. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some out there that dabble in both, but for the most part, they pick one or the other. Is right. that the same in interior design or is it? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and quite honestly, the reason I'm helping this commercial client is because she's a, a residential client of mine. So she just she just liked what everything that I presented. So she's like, please help me with this office space. Right. Okay. And there are some different things like lighting is a huge thing to consider in commercial properties. Yeah. Um, but the space planning is I what what I do in a residential property to space plan is what I do in a commercial property to space plan. Gotcha. Yeah, they're all the same. Yeah. Cool. And then uh, there was one question sent in for me. How does a renovation increase the value of a property? Uh, this is sent in by Alex. So very relevant question, Alex, mm -hmm. if you're going to be doing renovations, obviously you want to, there's two, two schools of thought there. You could renovate with the idea of increasing the value of your home, uh, or you can renovate with the idea of just enjoying the renovation because there are some renovations that will definitely make a difference to your bottom line and increase the value of your home. And then there's some renovations that not so much. So, um, how does it increase the value of your home? Well, it really depends on what you do. Um, the long and short, I guess the long and short of it would be, um, you know, flooring, paint, those sorts of things are the, can be the cheapest to do uh, and make the biggest difference. But then you start getting it, you could get into uh, some crazy expensive kitchens and bathrooms that, particularly bathrooms, you know, you could spend anything from what, <laughs> fifth, which, which, what was your minimum budget for a bathroom be? Do you Ten. Think? Ten. That's, and, that's bare minimum. And what's the maximum you've, have you seen? Uh, 50? 48. 40, yeah, I was going to say 50. <laughs> so if you did a difference between $10,000 on your bathroom versus $50,000, I can guarantee you that $50,000 bathroom, you will not recoup mm -hmm. that, yeah. that value, generally speaking, unless, unless you're... You know, maybe doing something to a really high-end home that increased its value by, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars or even a few hundred thousand dollars, then that might make a difference. But it's, uh, yeah, it should also. The other thing you want to also keep in mind is uh, don't over renovate for your neighborhood. So, for instance, you know, if um, if you've got a neighborhood where renovated or properties in need of renovation are going for say around a four hundred thousand. And then renovated properties are going for five hundred thousand dollars. Obviously, if you buy it for four hundred thousand dollars and you've got a two hundred thousand dollar renovation budget, yeah, <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> hopefully, you're not buying and flipping that home. <laughs> and whoever's your advisor, they need you need to reevaluate who your advisor is if that's the case. But yeah, so obviously, be aware of if you are renovating with the idea in mind of, of flipping it, then um, you want to keep that in mind. Be be wary of the ceiling, but then that's where you need a good real estate advisor or realtor to advise you on, on your rentals. And that's where we work together, right? Because if someone is looking at a property, we've done this before, we've gone together yep. and they're looking at potentially renovating and I can go in and, and roughly spit out a budget. This is what it would cost to do all this. And then as the potential investor and your client, they need to decide is it worth that or do we buy this property and maybe scale back a little bit on renovations um, when it comes to budget there's so many products out there and I know some people get renovation uh, paralyzed when it comes time to specifying products but there are so many products on the market that there is always a solution it just always comes down to the money yeah and that's where 
when we work together, uh, maybe able to ascertain, okay, what could we get this property for mm -hmm. uh, after renovation? What could we flip it for? Those two key uh, numbers plus your your renovation budget and whatnot yeah. should help the client be able to make an educated decision as to whether or not this is the right property for them. Yeah, and I know so. when I meet with clients uh, right off the bat, one of the first questions I ask is, are you renovating to sell or are you renovating to stay? Because that is important. Because yeah. if they're renovating, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're renovating to sell, then then that kind of narrows a little bit because you want to renovate for the current trend. If you're renovating to stay, then you're renovating more for your personal taste. Yeah. So that doesn't really come into play. Um, I was just at a house and they really want gray paint. And they said, but is gray going to go away? And I said, well, are you renovating to sell or are you renovating to live? We're renovating to live. Well, then use the paint you love. Let's find a color that you love. Yeah. That'll work with everything that's in your house. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for... It's um, fast. Yeah, yeah, it went really <laughs> fast. Eh? <laughs> it does go fast. Uh, the, the, the times I've done it before, it just uh, zips by and, and I'm like... Uh, that was fast. What do I say now? <laughs> anyway, well, thank you for, for being a guest today. Yeah, I'm so glad you. that you're able to sit in. And uh, I highly recommend Sherry. She does fabulous work and is very easy to work with and stays on budget. So And time. And time. Oh, that's right. And on time. <laughs> touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, that's all the time we've got for today. Um, hopefully, if you guys found this helpful, uh, share it with your friends. Uh, again, if you've got any questions, uh, even if it's after the broadcast, go ahead and put them in the comment section and we'll get them answered next time. And if they are um, related to today's topic, then um, I'm sure, sure, there's a tongue twister. I'm sure <laughs> Sherry will pipe in and, and uh, yeah, maybe give sure. the answer and whatnot. So yeah, for sure. anyway. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next week and uh, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Have a great day, everyone.